Hi, this is Nick Rizai with a new video series that we're putting together for practical exam questions for water treatment plant operators. Let me share this screen with you so we can get started on this new series. Okay, again, this is practical math for water treatment plant operators. It differs from the other hydraulic series that we put up recently in that these are problems and questions that you would get from an actual water treatment plant operations, uh, namely the Lake County, Ohio Aquarius water treatment plant. And we wanna thank them for letting us use their plant for some questions and answers. Uh, a lot of operators have expressed to me that they learn better by uh, be, being able to study actual plant problems uh, especially when they ask themselves the question, how can I use this practical math in my own water treatment plan? So if you're one of those kind of folks, fine, th these should be useful to you. So to make this work, I'll tell you a little bit about the Lake County plant itself, and I will give you a series of pages of operational data. And the idea would be that you would need to go in and find the data, the formulas that are there, any kind of things that you would need to work the five questions that I ask you. We'll work the five we'll slowly, a little bit at a time, and you can stop the video if you want to work through them, and then we'll start it up again. So again, the Lake County, Ohio Aquarius Water Treatment Plant. This is a 20 MGD conventional water treatment plant that uses Lake Erie as its source water. It was built in 1985 to serve western portions of Lake County, Ohio. Lake County is just east of Cleveland, right up there on Lake Erie. Uh, they have a remote raw water station with screening, and uh, the plant itself has two rapid mixers, six flocculators, four sed basins, six high-rate dual media filters, and of course, clear wells and disinfection chambers. And there's a series of chemicals used uh, for treatment of the water. So these are the um, tables that I want to show you. And I mentioned that operators prefer to learn this way in some, some parts. So this whole series, and there should be five or six videos to go with this series, this is the first will be both a lecture and a quiz of practical problems. So you need to decide for yourself if you just want to listen to the lecture and see the examples, or if you want to work the quiz. If you're going to work the quiz, then you need to stop the video now and make sure that you've got pen and paper, or pencil and paper, and, uh, and your calculator, that kind of thing, to enable to write down these questions and work them through. So you need to be able to stop the video, of course, to do that. I will give you ample opportunity and warning when a question is coming up. <clears throat> So the answers and questions are provided on each of the math slides so that you should be able to proceed whether you want to do the lecture or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first of the two tables, the first one is the US conversion factors to metric system. And the way this works is you would go to the left-hand column and de determine what it is that you're trying to work. Say, for example, you want to work in kilograms. You want to change them to pounds. You see that you have to multiply by 2.20460 to get to pounds. Likewise, if you want to start at pounds and work your way back to kilograms, you come through and multiply by 0.45359. So that's how that table works. And you will go through your questions and answers and find that you'll need some of that information on this table. Other parts of that information you do not need. It's just there. It's true stuff, but you may not need it. And that's the whole point of this quiz. Can you go into the tables and find the data that you need to work each, each problem? The second table here is just a table of formulas and constants that you can use again for the same questions that I'm going to ask you. You notice we got the Q equal AV uh, formula up there. This is something we worked on on the uh, hydraulic videos. If you haven't had a chance to see those, I suggest you go back and review some of those if you need that information. A lot of other constants here, for example, one cubic foot equals 7.48 gallons. Again, you may need that for these quizzes, you may not. Your, your job is to go in and try to find out. So here's the first question that I'm gonna ask. I'll ask it, we'll read it through, we'll, we'll question it ourselves. <clears throat> and then if you wanna stop the video and um, determine the answer for yourself, go ahead and do that. So it says, when they were designing the Aquarius raw water intake at this plant, the engineers settled upon a 60 inch diameter main, a five, a five foot diameter main, velocity of 2.84 feet per second when the plant was at its max flow. So question is, what flow rate must that be in MGD? When you figure that out, then convert that to liters per second. So there's two answers they're looking for. So they're gonna use the Q equal AV uh, formula. At least that's what I would use. There's always more than one way to work a problem, but that's the way I'm working this. So again, if you wanna stop the video now and work the problem, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to proceed to the answer now. I use the Q equal AV formula and I 
determine the square foot area of a five inch or a five foot diameter main is 0 0.785 times five squared times the velocity of 2.84 feet per second. And I've come up with a 55.75 cubic feet per second flow rate. I go up into my table and I see that for every cubic foot per second, I can divide by 1.5 to get MGD. And I did that and came up with 36 MGD for this plant. That must be the flow rate uh, at that velocity and a 60 inch diameter main. So that's one of the answers they were looking for. And when I write out that 36 million with all its zeros and divide by the fact that there are 1,440 minutes in a day, I come up with a flow rate of 25,000 GPM. And going up into the tables, I see a conversion factor to convert gallons per minute to liters per second just by multiplying by 0 0.0631. And when I do that, I come up with about 1577.3 liters per second. Well, I hope you got that first question right. Let's move on to the second. This question is saying that at the design flow, the Aquarius water treatment plant has five have pumps, five of them down there, uh, that are capable of pumping at a head of 78 feet. When they lift water through that height, uh, they're operating at a rate of 8.55 MGD. There are five pumps down there. Uh, three of them are 8.55. There's two others that are smaller. So what they're saying is there's one of the big ones operating, and it's developing 78 foot of total dynamic head. If the de design manual says they can develop up to 150 horsepower at those conditions, what must the overall efficiency be of that operation? So we know from a previous um, formula that we use in one of our hydraulic series, that the horsepower equals um, the gallons per minute times the feet of head divided by 3960 and the efficiency of the system. So like, if you want to stop here and work that through, go ahead, stop the video. Otherwise, I'm going to move on here. I converted that 8,550,000 gallons per day divided by 1440. I come up with 5937.5 gallons per minute, and you need that for your horsepower problem. When I was not looking for horsepower because they gave that to me at 150, I'm looking for the efficiency. So I switched those out. I took the efficiency out of the denominator and put that on the left side of the equation, brought my horsepower down to the denominator and worked through plugging in the numbers and I come up with a 78% efficiency. Hope you got that because you're gonna need it for the third problem. So we figured out at max flow and at the total dynamic head, we we're at 78%. This question says, if the local electric utility is charging you 13 cents per kilowatt hour for their electrical service, um, and if you ignore all the related electrical charges, such as demand charges and whatever, how much money could you save in the month of April if the efficiency of the system in problem number two was improved to 90%? Remember, we calculated 78% there. If we were able to make that pumping system 90% efficient, how much money could we save in April? Well, we know that April is a 30-day month. You can attack this two different ways, and I'm going to do this problem the long way. The first thing I'm going to do is, is figure out the cost in April to operate that system at the 78% efficiency. And I'll do it for the 90% efficiency and compare the cost, and that's what I've done here. On the left-hand side, I set up the equation for the 150, 150 horsepower problem. And I multiplied that 150 horsepower by the 0 0.746 kilowatt hours or kilowatts per horsepower, and I come up with 111.9 kilowatts. I do that for 24 hours and 30 days, 24 hours a day for 30 days. I come up with a usage of 80,568 kilowatt hours for the month. And at 13 cents per kilowatt hour, it comes out to $10,473. Now, if I were able to run that same system under the same conditions, except being 90% efficient rather than 78% efficient, I would work that through and come down with a $9,077 cost for April. So subtracting the two, I could expect to save $1,396.51. That's for the month of April at 90% efficiency. Hope you got that right. We'll move on to question number four. Question number four is a little bit easy, but it does have a little kink to it. The Aquarius plant averages 8.3 MGD and uses three milligrams per liter powder activated carbon to treat the water in April. How many kilograms of the chemical are they using per minute? So this is the basic dosage problem. You can, you can uh, work the pounds per day formula, but then you're going to have to take that pounds per day and convert it to kilograms per minute. The way I set this up was this way. Put the standard formula up there for three milligrams per liter at 8.34 pounds per million gallon for every one milligram per liter times the flow rate of 8.3 mgd. I come up with a usage of 207.7 pounds per day. If I take that 207.7 pounds per day and divide it by 1440 minutes, I would get 0.144 pounds per minute. 
I had to take the 1.44 pounds per minute, divide by 0 0.435, 359 kilograms per pound, I come up with 0 0.65 kilograms per minute. Hope you got that right. If you did, you've gotten four out of the five correct already. You've got an 80%, you passed. Let's try the last one. It's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more involved. In fact, I needed two slides to do this one. Well, question number five says, using the information from question number four, Assuming the raw water suspended solids was averaging 12 milligrams per liter, and the plant was using 22 milligrams per liter liquid alum polymer blend as product. Show how many pounds per day dry solids are produced. So that's the first question they're asking you. And, and this is something that operators don't tend to think about too much in water plants. But what about the solids that you produce? What about the waste? How do you deal with that? Some plants have to deal with it every day. They can't just dump it into the sewer. Some plants have to pay a cost to have it trucked away. This plant does. So the first question they want to figure out is how many pounds per day of dry solids are we producing? And then when they do that, they realize that we don't produce dry solids in a water plant. We, we produce solids suspended in liquid in water. It comes out of percent solids. And in this particular case, it's saying that it comes out of the said basins at about 4% average. How many gallons is that going to relate to? And then once you do that, it asks you another question. It says, you can use your thickeners, and this plant has two of them. You can use your thickeners to bring that 4% solids up to 14% by decanting, taking off the supernate, letting it settle a little bit. How many gallons would that be? And for that, you're going to use the V1N1 formula. Figure out what things were before and then what, the, what are they after, after you thicken it down to 14%. Then the third part of the question is at 3,000 3, gallons per truckload, how often is that truck going to have to come each day to haul away those solids that you produced out of the thickener at 14%? That's an involved question, but it's a very practical one that the plant needs to know because if you're the one that has to schedule that truck in every day, you better be able to tell that driver how often he or she has to come. So based on answers to question number five, we went to look like this. I took the 22 milligrams per liter uh, alum polymer blend and found that in the table it said that 45% of that was actual dry basis alum. So that works out to be 9.9 .9 milligrams per liter dry basis alum. The pounds per day solids then out of the equation that I found in the table would equal 8.34 times the flow rate multiplied times this quantity, 0.44 times the aluminum, which was 9.9, .9, plus the suspended solids, plus the A, which is an, uh, an actual uh, amount of other chemicals that we're using that would add to the solids. And in this case, it was from the other problem, 3 milligrams per liter activated carbon. When I work that out, I come out to 13, 000, or 1,340 pounds per day dry solids. Those dry solids are at 4%. I'm going to divide that and come up with the fact that, that, 4 that those pounds of dry solids are, are suspended in 33,500 gallons of sludge. Now, when I work that properly in my thickener and let that settle out and decant it every day for a couple of days, I can get that up to 14%. So now what used to be 4%, 33,500 gallons of 4% solids, is now how many gallons of 14% solids? Well, when I do the V1N1 question, I come up with uh, 9,571 gallons of 14%. So now I can answer the truck driver and tell him, look, you're going to have to come here, since you can only haul 3,000 gallons per trip, you're going to have to come here a little bit over three times a day to get my 9,571 gallons out of here. So that's that. So with that, I hope you did well. We will uh, be producing more videos of uh, uh, treatment here for the Aquarius plant. Look back soon. Thanks.